Hey everyone, um, uh, this is Mark from Right Line Trading, and uh, I have to start, unfortunately, with this disclaimer, um, which just states that uh, you know we are not um, certified uh, uh, trading advisors, and um, the, the, the material that we present for you is for educational purposes only. Um, never risk more than two percent of your account on any trade, and do your own due diligence. Uh, consult a financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. Um, and with that said, let's 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 move forward. Now, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. I'm a former professor at Jefferson University in Philadelphia, and I've really been involved in the financial markets for over 20 years. And I began trading the futures and forex markets 10 years ago, but I've, I've been trading stocks uh, over 25 years, um, way prior to the internet bubble. Um, and in my graduate training, I was involved in the optimization of different software systems using mathematical modeling. And really, that is, that is the discipline that, that I have brought to right-line trading and that really is the way that we provide software that predicts the future movement of price. It's via the use of mathematical modeling. We look to define what independent variables are responsible for changing price on the trading instrument that you're using. We put those in a multivariable equation and then we optimize that equation. Now, unlike most software systems, ours are, 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 are grounded in fundamental sound math. Now, we know what the predictive value is of each of our trading entries, and we are able to assess risk on every entry, which is extremely important. Now, just a little bit about the problem with current technical analysis. Now, 95% of day traders fail. And if you look at the history of day trading and swing trading, that number just won't improve, it doesn't improve. It's still mired in, in, in an area that's simply awful and really there's no reason for it. In almost any other endeavor, any other scientific endeavor, what happens maybe at, 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 its, at the outset, you get a high failure rate. And, and let's take architecture, for instance. At the outset, maybe 95% of all the buildings that you erect collapse, just as an example. But what happens is, is, is that on a scientific basis, everybody, people move in and they do an analysis of which components of the system that you use to erect the building work and which components that you use to erect the building fail. You eliminate those components that fail, you amplify those components that work, and then you look for new additional features to add to make that success rate get better and better and better. But what happens with day trading is we don't do any of that. All of the technical analysis, the indicators, and the, the software that you're offered is all identical to the software that was offered 20 years ago. It's based on oscillators and MACD and Fibonacci and Elliott Wave, all the stuff that, that's created this enormous failure rate. And nobody has really done a scientific analysis to determine if any of that stuff works. So what we have to do is not take a priori as being, as being effective, any component of any trading system simply because someone tells us so. We have to be shown, you know, show us the beef. We want to see the numbers. We want to see what leads them to say, if you trade the system and you take these signals, they're going to make you money. Not hide the system from you, show you the system up front and show you why on a mathematical basis 
it's going to be successful for you. Now, if you do a Nexus Lexus search of the world literature, you're going to find that there's very, very little scientific analysis of the indicators we use. I mean, what is the predictive value of an oscillator crossover or a MACD crossover? What is the predictive value of Fibonacci support and resistance? It's, well, it's never been looked at. And if it's never been looked at, why should we assume that it works? It certainly shouldn't be because anyone tells us so because 95% of all the traders who have traded in the past are all bankrupt. So let's not take anything as being effective unless we're shown why it's effective. Now, I just wanted to just talk really briefly about Fibonacci. And then I'm going to go into the, 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 what I'm going to show you is really a really, it's a real concise talk. It's not complex. And it's really going to be one indicator I'm going to show you. And the indicator was very tough for us to make, but its analysis and the data that it provides you for entries is, is really straightforward. And I just want to talk a little bit about Fibonacci. For some reason, Fibonacci has had a, a people t like it for some reason. They gravitate towards it. And it's really because it's, pro it's proffered really ardently by lots of people as being sort of like one of, the comp one of the holy grail components of trading. And if you think about it, Fibonacci was an 11th century mathematician. And his initial derivations are, ca are, are called uh, Fibonacci transformations. And from Fibonacci transformations, we get Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers are really quite cool. If you look on YouTube, you can do really cool things with Fibonacci numbers. But what, for what, it's completely unknown to me why 800 years later, anyone would assume that price on any financial instrument respects Fibonacci areas of support and resistance is totally without, I mean, I find it incredulous because it has no basis in math, no basis in fact, and it has not made money for anybody in the last 20 years. So people should stop gravitating towards it because it will always be sold to you, always be proffered to you, and always be offered to you because it's an easy, it's an easy system. Now, Fibonacci itself doesn't work. Fibonacci confluences are no better. Fibonacci clusters are no better. If the fundamental math is flawed, no matter how you configure the analysis, it's going to be flawed as well. And I don't want to go into oscillators and MACD, but trust me, they are no better. Now, here's what I want to show you an indicator that we have created that nobody else has. And I am telling you the institutions use it. And when you see how it works, you're going to see why. It's called a cash metrics indicator. Now, this indicator is equally as effective on futures and, as it is on stocks. And it's awesome on stocks. And I use it to trade futures every single day. And we, one of the, one of the, um, it, one of the uh, markets that we trade every day is the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ really is our cash cow. And the only way we could trade it live in the live trading room is if we had this indicator. It tames the NASDAQ and, and, brings, and brings focus to it in such a way as we can take low-risk, high-reward trades and really stand aside on almost every single loser and step in to almost every single low-risk winner. Let me show you exactly what it is. Now, this is the instrument manager on my Ninja Trader. Now, I want to make it clear, because a lot of people tell, say afterwards that I didn't make this clear. In order for the indicator to work, you must have a kinetic data feed. The kinetic data feed is going to cost you $50 a month. It's the basic data feed for Kinetic. It's real easy to get, and the form is really easy to fill out. You don't add any Globex or any futures 
information. You just want what's called the same data that provides you with the, tr the, the tick and the trend. And what these are, are 16 metrics that look inside the cash markets. And those 16, 16 metrics are divided into eight that look at volume and eight that look at tick data. Now the tick data on multiple areas is looking at up ticks versus down ticks. And we're looking at up volume versus down volume on 88 different indices for both. Now, if you, you see here, this is the SOX, this is the semiconductor, whoops, this is the semiconductor uh, index. So we're looking at multiple indices to get a handle on which direction not only a stock is likely to move, but also a future is likely to move. It's no black box. It's very straightforward what this indicator does. Now, I put 21, and initially we had 21, but we reduced it to 16 because we found that five don't increase the precision of the trading of the, of the indicator. And they're, and they're grouped into four. So you're going to get one cash metric for the Dow, one for the NASDAQ, one for the S&P 500, and one for the Russell 2000 index. And all the data that comes into this indicator comes off the cash markets. So obviously, if your stock is on the NASDAQ, you put the NASDAQ in, and it's going to give you tremendous predictive power for, 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 for determining the direction that your stock is going to take. Now, some, some stocks are on multiple indices, and you're going to have to make a decision as to which one of these you feel carries the most throw weight. Remembering that the NASDAQ is a market cap weighted index. So if Google or Amazon or Netflix crash, they're going to drag the whole NASDAQ down with it. But it really won't bother the metrics indicator too much because those internals don't change a whole lot. So you just have to decide whether if it's a small cap, it's clearly going to be on the Russell. If it's an S&P 500 or a NASDAQ or a Dow stock, a lot, all the Dow stocks are probably on the S&P 500 and you're going to probably opt for that. But that's really an easy decision for you to make. Now, again, they look at the ratio as an example of up-down volume the advanced decline, advancing versus declining um, issues, uh, up, uptick, down ticking, um, stocks, basket of stocks, indices. It looks at advancing versus declining specific ETFs on volume and on ticks. And what you get are two lines, and they look just like this. And this is the R, this is the RL cash quant for the E-mini. And you can use this on the futures market or you can use this on the cash market. And this is the tick data. And this is the volume-based data. So you have the eight being analyzed here on the tick side, eight being analyzed here on the volume side. And for some reason that I can't tell you, the tick data is much faster than the volume data. It moves real swiftly. And the volume data tends to move slower. So I refer to these as the fast cash line and the slow cash line. And when the tick line or the upper line swings into your favor and the market is going to, you think, going to make a fast move up, likely the volume line is going to come in a bit later. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you lots of trades. Now, this really is the entire indicator. There's nothing more complicated about it than this. You want to trade in this direction because you want to trade in the direction of market internals. Now, there's lots of gimmicks. You know, you want to trade gaps. I'm going to show you the right way to trade a gap. 
You want to trade the market open? I'm going to show you the right way to trade the market open. Uh, you want to trade a momentum breakout? 70% of momentum breakouts fail. Um, and these are all market open gimmick trades that really don't have any fundamental mathematical data to back up their success rate. So you want to stay away from them because they haven't been making money for anyone in the past 25 years. And they are nothing new under the sun. They're the same stuff that's been traded since 1995 and earlier. And they don't make money for anybody. Now we make money almost every day in the live trading room. And we're going to put you in there for three months as part of this offer. Now I want you to see a trade on Garmin. Now I'm going to show you trades on all different time frames and on all different stocks and futures markets. Now here you can see on stocks, these lines tend to move quite smoothly. They're a little more staccato like on the futures markets. But when all the tick data is pointing up and all the volume data is pointing up, is when the likelihood of the stock that you're looking at in that basket, whether this is the uh, Garmin is on the NASDAQ, and this will be the NASDAQ line, is likely to move to the upside. Now, every single stock has its own relative strength on any given day. Some stocks will make big moves on a dual green line. Some stocks will make smaller moves. What you want to do is you have to create your own look, wish list of stocks and the ones that you believe have the ability to take a big move. But the direction is fixed. If you trade against the direction of market internals, you're likely going to get stopped out. Even if, you, even if there's terrible news on your stock and it gaps down and the stock is trading at an all-time low, the gap is likely to push to the upside and you're going to see that if these both if these dual lines are green now here's akamai on a 60 minute chart when they go red red you simply look for a pull back long and these are commercial traders like us fading the market in the counter trend direction they are going to fail you trade in the direction of the trend, which is down. The 50's down, the 15's down, and you take this trade short. This made a buck five on very little risk. The risk to reward here is amazing in your favor. The key here is look at this long candle against these two red lines. All these long traders are simply going to bite the dust. And what are they trading? They're trading MACD divergence. They're trading oscillator divergence. They're trading off of Fibonacci support. They're trading all the stuff that has bankrupted traders forever. And what happens to them? They simply get run over and die. This B candle is a counter trend candle. If you hadn't gotten into the trade, you could take the C candle short. These long traders, same thing same types of signals and they're going to get run over. This is the direction that's fixed and this is the direction you must trade in the direction of. Here's a trade on Nvidia on an eight range. And you ha and, and and like this is a very smooth signal on the stock market. It's a little choppier on the futures market because we're, what we're doing is we're and I'm going to show you trades on the futures market because we're transferring data from the stock market or the cash markets to determine the direction of the futures markets and believe me there's a tremendous a, tre a tremendously high correlation now on the entry here on, on Nvidia you make a buck eight on a risk of 10 cents that's an amazing risk to reward you'd have to get 10 losers to eclipse the amount of money you made on one winner. And that's never going to happen. 
Now, here's how you trade the market open. Now, you rarely get this on futures, but you see this on stocks often. You get dual greens at the market open. Now, the market gaps up. Now, I want to talk for a second about gaps. What create? There's all kinds of cockamamie gap trading systems of evaluating gaps and doing this with gaps and that with gaps. Here's the lowdown and the truth about a gap. Gaps are created by the small commercial traders like us. The institutional traders do not trade pre-market because there's insufficient liquidity in the market for them to trade. So whatever came out on Best Buy, I don't know on this particular day, it was, it was September 12th. Something happened to create a gap to the downside on Best Buy. And the gap down was created by the small trader. Now, what do you do with the gap? Do you fade it and continue to take it? I'm sorry, do you take it short or do you fade it? Well, actually, the gap, I'm sorry, you know, you get a gap down, but at market open at 9.30, the market gaps up. Please excuse me. So pre-market, the commercial traders gap the stock down, and then at market open, it gaps up. Now, what do you do with the gap? First of all, pre-market, you can make no absolutely no assessment of the quality of the gap because it's created by small traders on very light volume. There's nothing you can do with the gap pre-market that's going to determine how it's going to act once the market opens because when it opens, that's when the institutional traders roll with it. Now, when the market, in this particular case, at 930 gaps up, do you trade with the gap? or do you fade the gap? And then when all the market internals are green-green, you're gonna get in as early as you can and you're gonna trade this long because it's simply gonna widen the gap to the upside. The stock gapped up and it's gonna run up. If this was red-red, you'd anticipate that the gap up wouldn't, would not be successful and the gap might close. That's how you trade a gap. A gap is untradeable and unassessable pre-market because it's created by commercial amateur traders like us. And by amateur, I mean we trade small num you know tra small number of of of, uh, of amounts. We don't trade you know five hundred thousand shares. We maybe we trade five hundred or maybe we trade a hundred, but we don't trade massive amounts. So you can't make any assessment pre-market. There's no way you can make any evaluation of this market, of this gap pre-market. But this is how you trade a gap. Now here's a gap on Opco, Optical Kinetics. It's on a five range. And it's a stock I use often in my options portfolio. Now you'll see right here, the stock is moving up and you can't take it long because the market cash metrics are calling for a short. And sometimes when that, that's when you step away from the stock. Now, in the morning, between 9.13 and 9.14, the stock makes a huge pre-market gap to the downside. And what do you do with the gap? The market opens at 9.30, somewhere in here, and the cash metrics go red, red. That's when you're gonna know the gap is not gonna fill, it's gonna push down further, and that's the direction you're gonna take the trade with the gap. And this is a very low risk, high reward entry. Now here is, um, this is console energy, and it's a 60 minute. And I purposely created entries on different stocks, because I always get the question, does it work on different time frames? It doesn't matter the time frame, and it doesn't matter the stock, and you're going to see it doesn't matter what futures market you trade. They're irrelevant. The stock gaps up at the open on 912. 
the metrics, and this is a multi is a multi day trade. This is not a day trade; it's a swing trade. They stay green, green through 912, through 913, and into 914. So you have to hold this three days, but there's no problem with holding a stock three days. There's a lot of problems with holding futures, um, but you make a buck ten on a fifteen dollar and ninety cent stock. It's a, that's an amazing amount of profit on a small on a stock that's very cheap. Here's Facebook, and this is this is 912. You see it gaps down on 98. You wait for the market to open somewhere in here. Oh, here's the market open. The metrics go red, red, and you short Facebook. So it's going to move in the direction of the gap. You're going to get a continuation of this move. This is the professionals now coming in. They're rolling the market metrics to the downside, and only they can do that. We as commercial traders can do nothing to, to change 16 internal metrics on four markets. Here's the move to the upside. Green, green, up you go. And this is a multi-day trade on a 60-minute chart. Here's nine points on the NQ. This is unusual. This is a long signal, but you can see it happened very late in the day. And it happened, let's see, this is um, 16.30, that's 2.30 in the afternoon, um, Eastern time. So it's late, and everything just rolled to the downside, stuck, and it's a three-minute. And you've got nine points on the NQ. And what this is doing is telling you that the cash NASDAQ is on its way to the downside. So the futures market on the NASDAQ is almost always going to follow the direction of the cash market or vice versa, but they're going to move in concert with each other. You don't want to take an NQ trade long when the cash NQ is moving short. And this is the first time I believe in history that's anyone, that anyone has used information from the cash markets to give you an idea of which direction to trade the futures markets. Now, the futures markets are independent, and they can always go their own merry way. But those are trades that are difficult to get. They're high risk trades. If you trade in the, listen, you're only looking for a, a small number of low risk, high reward trades to make an enormous amount of money and be very successful. If you have a tremendous amount of confidence in your entry, that means you're going you're gonna to have to sidestep almost every loser and you're going to sidestep some winners. But when you take a trade, the probability that the trade is successful is exceedingly high. That's how you become a successful day trader and swing trader. The predictive value and the precision of these trading entries are incredibly high. Here's the E-mini. This is from 9-11. Something happened today on 9-11 to push this thing up straight. We don't normally see this. And I pulled these slides because we got confluent signals. It was a nine and a quarter points to the upside. And that's because the cash markets are just ripping to the upside. And they're going to pull the futures markets up, or the future markets are ripping to the upside, and they're going to pull the cash markets up. Nobody knows which leads and which follows. All we know is that they trade in concert together, and we want to trade in the same direction as the other one. Here is the E-mini at market open. Again, for the futures market, unusual. But right at the open, we get dual greens. It's on a three minute. And this is just a run to the upside on a market open. 
This is a seven and a quarter point move. Now, here's what I wanted to show you on this. This gaps to the upside, but here's a specific instance. And this is on Walmart on an eight range on 9-11. And 9-11 was the same day that we saw the E-mini make a huge move to the upside. Well, Walmart didn't make a move to the upside. And Walmart is on, is on a different market. And Walmart made a big move to the downside. And you can see that every time you've got a move to the upside, you can fade the market, fade the market, fade the market. And if you took the short all the way, you got an enormous move. The key here is it gives you the direction to trade this gap. Because the market was so strong, it gapped to the upside. But that gap is closed and run over because the cash metrics are, are, are chugging to the downside. Now here's 9.15 on Lennar. Now, a lot of traders think you can't make a lot of money off of stocks that you know, don't have a lot of volatility, the high, the high beta stocks like Netflix and Facebook and Google and Amazon. But you can take uh, a very low volatility stock like Lennar, which is a home builder, on an eight range and make a lot of money on a big move to the downside. And stocks tend to move very smoothly, and the cash metrics tend to roll and stay. And you can see it calls the short and then calls the reversal. Now, I don't like to trade reversals, but if you want to do it, this is, you have to have a dual green signal and know that 16 market internals are telling you that the market is going to go long. Here's Tesla on a three-minute boom to the upside. Soon as the fast cash turns red, and this is the tick data, the, the Tesla is going to fade. Here's a market open on a three minute on Tesla. I think this is no, it's a different day. Boom. And the market opens, and you got the amateur traders taking it short. Then the cash metrics roll green, and the professional institutional traders come in, and they just push this thing up like mad. It's an $8.46 move with no sweat. Then you can see the colors diverge. You've got yellow, red, yellow, red, green on the slow cash, and the stock trades choppy. This is when you want to stay away from the stock. Well, here's Facebook. Now this is the full system. I didn't want to show you the full system. But this is the cash metrics indicator on Facebook, on the NQ, on 822. Your entry is right here. You make 40 cents on 10 cents of risk. Now the risk to reward is key. If you can make four cents on every cent that you risk, irrespective of how many shares you trade, your risk to reward is an awesomely good. And that's what you're looking for, that kind of risk to reward. Here's 75 cents on Perigo, a generic pharmaceutical company. The top two lines are the cash metrics, trading off of the value area high for a long move for 75 cents on 10 miserable cents of risk. Seven and a half to one. You just have to wait for this confluence and you have to trade off support on a long trade. Here's a short trade on Tesla. Out of consolidation, 65 cents on 15 cents of risk. And I go through this all day, but on dual signals, 
the likelihood of taking a loser when the market, you have to trade a, a, the market in a downtrend. And you can see that the 50s red and the 15s red. And when you're trading a down market and you get a down signal, the probability of taking a loser is exceedingly low. Remember, we want to trend trade. We don't want to counter trend trade. And when we get an alignment to the downside in a down market and we trade short, the probability of a win is exceedingly high. Here is Netflix on a 13 range, 99 cents on 15 cents of risk. Taken right off the resistance of the value area low. Actually, that's the value area high. Here's Apple. 78 cents of profit on 15 cents of risk. And you'll notice every trade is with the trend. I don't advise you ever counter trend trade. It works for gaps and continuation trades. And on trend trades, you want to trade with the trend because the trend is created by institutional money. So when you take a trend trade and you're going with the trend, you're trading with the big players because they've created that trend. And that's, listen, that's the game. That's what this indicator is telling you. It's, an, it's indirectly, and all sorts of people tell you they track the flow of institutional money where there's no, well, there's no direct way of tracking it unless the institutions call you up on the phone and they say to you, oh, by the way, we're going to be selling a lot of Apple in the next two minutes because it would keep your eyes peeled. There isn't any direct way. But when 16 market internals roll to the downside, you know that that's only going to occur when the institutional players are really selling a lot of Apple. And you want to gain in it on that trade. Here are the non-institutional small traders counter trend trading without any confirmation that this long trade is going to be successful and you know what's going to happen to them. And again, oscillator divergence, MACD divergence, Fibonacci, whatever stuff they're trading is doomed to fail. And these are those 95% of day traders and swing traders that are going to go broke. They do it right here. They're doomed. Down they go. Now, eventually, they find the bottom. But they don't find the bottom until they're crushed. So let them trade the bottom. We don't call bottoms and we don't call tops. And I can tell you, on a mathematical basis, there's lots of people out there who can tell you they can call tops and bottoms. I've heard them talk all the time. Every single brilliant market analyst on Wall Street cannot do it. So if somebody comes in a webinar and tells you they have software that can call an S&P 500 top and an S&P 500 bottom, well, you know what? They know more than every single institutional player out there. And just let me give you just, I have just a couple of seconds and I want to tell you this. What I do to trade options is I track the flow of institutional money by looking at Options Monster and by looking at Benzinga Pro. They show you all the big options trades crossing, like the half a million dollar, the million dollar, the multi-million dollar options trades crossing on individual stocks. Sometimes they, tra they, they cross on ETFs and the fact Commonly, they cross on ETFs. That gives you an idea of the direction of, of, of institutional money. And I'll always trade in that, in that direction. You have to be very careful about counter-trend trading. Here's Tesla again. Dual red cash quants on a short. And I think I, we saw this one. Now this is Akamai, this is, on the, this is on a five range, a very fast chart. You only take seven cents of risk and you make 30 cents. The upper lines, I'm sorry, the bottom lines are the cash metrics on the NQ. Akamai cash metrics. 
Here's Win Resorts, dual reds, cash metrics, 29 cents on seven cents of risk. I love to trade Win. I trade it often in the options, on, on options, optical kinetics I trade often. They're very slow moving and Facebook and, all, and those small biotechs are great to trade, but sometimes they can blow you away. These are very smooth and you can make a lot of money off of these um, low beta stocks. These smooth moving stocks, S&P 500, non-tech, non-biotech, non-small cap stocks, if you trend trade them in the direction of the cash metrics, what you're taught is to try to get a small biotech on a breakout and try to get a buck and a quarter on you know, a stock that costs you $2.50. You're not going to make money that way. Here's Tesla on a short move. Out of consolidation, that's a consolidation signal. Now, with the system, it tells you when you take, can take a trend trade. Now, when you, when you get a trend trade and you have an up move and, you have, and, this, and, this, and the stock or future moves back to support, you have to ask yourself two things. Is the support going to hold? Is the trend going to remain intact? And are we going to get a continued move to the upside? The cash metrics are going to give you the answer. If they stay green, green on a long move to a pullback to support, the likelihood of the continuation long is exceedingly high. If you get a pull up to resistance on a short trade and the cash metrics are red, red, you're very likely going to enter the trade short on a continuation to the short side. Gaps pre-market, you get no information whatsoever. It's a gap that's created by the small players like us. We want the gap to open, let the, let the institutional traders come, rotate the cash metrics, determine the direction, and then you decide whether to take the gap down and run with the gap to the downside, or the gap is likely to close to the upside. That's what this indicator allows you to do. When it's aligned on market open, and you've got a stock with a nice, powerful relative strength that really, really can move, you get a nice move to the upside. You can't trade market open on futures because the futures are open all the time. Um, you, you, you know, just, and and the uh, stock market is closed for many hours. Now, pre-market, I don't consider that to be any tradable opportunity because volume is low, it's all amateur traders, and I, don't, I do not recommend to trade pre-market. Now, reversals are extremely risky, and I don't like to trade reversals. I don't like anything to call a top or a bottom. But if you are absolutely hell-bent on trading them, you've got to wait for market internals to, to completely reverse, or you're not going to get follow-through on the reversal trade. It's going to come right back and stop you out because you're taking reversal before the institutional traders have stepped aside and they are gonna push that trade right back up into your face. That's what you have to wait for. I don't recommend taking this trade at all. You're gonna to get too many great trend trades, too many great gaps on stocks, too many great market opens on stocks to trade this. Now, I didn't even look at momentum breakouts and continuations, because I don't like those trades. You make too much money on these three configurations and on futures, just taking trend trades. So I just wanted to give you two quick testimonials. I know I only have two more minutes. Um, to give you tw 10 seconds, of, you know, I, I'm, I'm taking too long. These are two, Jersey Tony is a top, t is a top step trader, so his performance is published. Um, he does incredibly well with our system. Trader D is the number one trader for 2016. Here's his performance in the 50K bracket. He made $54,000, the number one trader. Now, people throw up testimonials, but these are real. And this is a real trader who's been in our room for two and a half years. He's the number one stop, um, top step trader in this, um, I forget what they call it on top step, but in, in, in this bracket. So here's the special. Now, I'm, I'll take 60 seconds for questions, and I just want to tell you this. 
<clears throat> if you create the indicator, if you buy the indicator, we're going to hold a webinar and I am going to show you how to leverage it the best in a live market. It takes a little bit of screen time, but I'm going to show you how to trade it. Now, the indicator is 497 bucks. It's normally 997. You get one month in the trading room, which is $149. If you're one of the first 10 orders, you get the indicator for 497 and we add on three months in the room. You're going to trade with me and you're going to trade futures, but it's really going to help you with your trading style and methodology to later on if you want to trade stocks. It's going to, I'm telling you, it's going to give you an, an amazing perspective on how to trade the markets. And it's going to show you what not to do. You get our, um, uh, our video tutorial library and you get a second license. So the whole special is available to the 29th and to the first 10. They get three months in the room. They get our video tutorial library and they get a second license. And I'm telling you, being in the room for 90 days is really going to revolutionize your trading because I take very conservative trades and I stay away from all the risk. So let me, let me just see if there are any quick questions that I can answer for you guys. Okay. Let me just go as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you, Ted. Ted, give me a clap. Oh, no, no, these, these, listen, BC, these indicators are neither la lagging nor leading. They are real-time market internals. They tend to, oh, 29th is, no, we're, we're stopping it on Friday, Irene, because today is Wednesday, so we're giving, we're giving it two days. We're not going to let it run through the weekend. Um, so when, at the time of entry, if those market internals are in your favor, they're going to give you a great trade. The most important thing for you to understand is they are not lagging. They are predicting the future movement of price. When you have a green, green internal, it's going to carry that trade for you. If you have a red, red, it's going to carry that trade for you. So they are right with you on price. And, and they're not, they're, and their prior analysis is irrelevant. It's only what they show on the right edge. We had NQ trades today. Uh, we had real nice ones today. We had one trade for 19 ticks, and we had one trade for 15. I just don't have time. On the NQ, we trade a 13 range. Uh, to day trade on the NQ, I would recommend a one hour. Um, if you if you want to take a, a swing trade, you're going to get great signals on the NQ, and the NQ is a is a tremendously makes us a lot of money. Um, it made us all our money today. We had the crude was awful, the E mini was untradeable, and the NQ gave us great trend trades every time in the direction of the cash metrics. So listen, everyone, if you have any other questions, just give me a call. Um, or um, send us an email. Um, I hope to see you aboard, and I hope to see you in the trading room. So have a really, really great a a afternoon, and thank you so much for having me uh, as, as a part of this um, as a part of this event.